The next topic that we're going to focus on will be the metabolism of amino acids. So we're going to look at the synthesis of amino acids, the breakdown of amino acids, and we're also actually going to study other biosynthetic processes that utilize amino acids. So what exactly are amino acids and what are amino acids actually used for? Well, amino acids are these nitrogen-containing molecules that, as you may know, are the building blocks of protein. But we also use amino acids to actually synthesize other important molecules such as nucleotide bases. And nucleotide bases are used to form DNA molecules, RNA molecules, they're used to form ATP, the energy currency of the cell. So amino acids are very important molecules. And we also actually utilize amino acids for energy, as we'll see in a lecture to come. Now, what exactly are the sources of amino acids? Well, 10 out of the 20 amino acids used by the cells of our body are actually synthesized inside our cells. So we can synthesize amino acids, 10 amino acids from scratch. But the other 10 amino acids are called essential amino acids, and that's because we cannot actually synthesize those 10 amino acids. These 10 essential amino acids are obtained from two sources. Source number one are dietary sources. So we can ingest protein, break down the protein into amino acids, and then use the amino acids for some type of process. And the other source of amino acids are the breakdown of pre-existing proteins found inside our body, inside our cells. So recall that we ingest food and then that food, if it contains protein, it makes its way into the lumen of the stomach. Now, in the lumen of the stomach, we have a low pH, a high acidity, an acidity of about 2. So the pH is about 2. And that low pH essentially stimulates, it activates an enzyme, a proteolytic enzyme known as pepsin. So the protein inside the stomach is essentially denatured. It essentially goes from being a very structured protein to a randomly coiled protein. And that increases the surface area of that particular protein. And now the pepsin can act on that increased surface area and cleave, break down that protein into smaller protein molecules. Now, those smaller protein molecules move from this lumen of the stomach into the lumen of the small intestine. And, one insi and once inside the lumen of the small intestine, we have other proteolytic enzymes produced by the pancreas are secreted into the lumen of the small intestine. And these proteolytic digestive enzymes essentially begin to cleave the smaller proteins into oligopeptides and free amino acids. Now, these amino acids are essentially absorbed into the cytoplasm of the small intestinal cells via special type of transport proteins. Now, what about these oligopeptides? Well, oligopeptides are further digested to form di- and tripeptides by the enzymes found on the brush border of the small intestinal cells. And these di- and tripeptides can be absorbed via specific types of transport protein molecules found within the, uh, within the cell membrane of these small intestinal cells. Now, these tripeptides inside the cytoplasm, they're further cleaved into amino acids. And then those amino acids, in combination with these amino acids, are transported into the bloodstream. In the bloodstream, then they move to their target location, their target cell. Now, the other pathway by which we obtain these 20 amino acids is by breaking down the existing proteins that are found inside our body. So we have proteins found inside the cells as well as outside the cells. And these proteins can be broken down and recycled into amino acids. So we have many different types of proteins that, are, that exist as enzymes and these enzymes must be inactivated and sometimes to inactivate an enzyme we proteolytically cleave it we destroy it and then we recycle those amino acids now some proteins can be damaged for example the oxidation processes and when proteins are damaged we have special types of complexes that exist inside our cells as we'll talk about in the next lecture that utilize a protein known as ubiquitin and a complex
complex known as the proteasome complex that essentially breaks down and degrades damaged or misfolded proteins into their amino acid constituents. And then those amino acid constituents can be utilized by the cell to carry out some type of process to build some type of important molecule. Now, unlike fatty acid molecules or glucose molecules, amino acids are not actually stored inside our body. So if we have excess amino acids, we cannot actually store that excess amino acids in the same way that we can store glucose as glycogen or fatty acids in our fat cells. So <clears throat> what exactly happens to these excess amino acids? Well, as we'll discuss in a future lecture, these amino acids are actually broken down into carbon skeletons as well as into nitrogen-containing molecules, ammonia, in the process known as urea. And we'll talk about this in much more detail in a lecture to come. So in the next lecture, we're going to focus on the breakdown of proteins into amino acids by a complex known as the proteasome complex.